Look, the third tip for anyone who's looking to buy property at auction is to get your ducks in a row. And the first one is finance. And I know it sounds really straightforward and simple, but the amount of people who actually do turn up at auction without having their finance done is really, it does amaze me. Um, but the other thing too is get it really specifically looked at. So talk to your bank or your finance broker, because it's not enough just to say, oh, the bank's good for it, they'll lend me the money. In my opinion, it's best to get it all sorted prior to turning up on the day. Um, so you've got your equity released, you know where you're gonna get your deposit from, you've got your stamp duty and costs, everything ready for settlement. And the other thing to keep in mind is if you're bidding over 80%, uh, keep in mind that you don't want to be buying a property in a suburb where you're setting a premium or a really high benchmark for price because what's going to happen is the bank may send out a valuer and if they don't think that the value is the same as the price that you've paid, they might come in at lower. And if you've got an LVR that's a bit higher than that, maybe 90 or 95%, that might put you under a lot of pressure. So it's important to know if you are bidding over uh, 80% and you are going into mortgage insurance territory to make sure that the price is realistic and uh, reflective of the prices that are being paid in the rest of the suburb. Now it's important that uh, when it goes to auction you know it's unconditional. No cooling off period, no second chances. So you need to get building and pest inspection done prior to actually turning up on the day. So you can make sure that the structure is okay and make sure of course that there's no termites um, eating the place inside out. Now again, the amount of people that I see bid at auction who haven't done these two really basic things uh, really often staggers me, but um, it's going to put you in the box seat and really give you that confidence that you need on the day, because let's be honest, when you are bidding, when the focus is on you, the adrenaline is kicking in, you really do need all the confidence you can get. So having your ducks uh, lined up in a row before you get there on the day can certainly help you with that. And the last thing is actually get the contract checked out by your solicitor or your conveyancer well in advance of turning up. Because if you actually want to make any changes or change any conditions in that particular contract, once the hammer's gone down, you can't do it. You actually have to get these agreed upon uh, prior um, to turning up on the day. And for example, uh, one of the ones that I like to put in is I want, because we're buying often for a lot of investors, I want the vendor to give me permission to use the campaign photos for us to um, advertise for rent for a tenant a couple of weeks out. And they actually own those photos. We can't actually do that without their permission. The other clause I put in is um, allowing the vendor to give us permission to actually advertise for rent prior to settlement because in effect it's still not our property. So a couple of things like that that we get approved prior again gives us that confidence to make sure that when we're bidding on the day we're doing the right thing by our clients and it's something that you could also do in advance to give you um, the amount of confidence that you need to bid on the day.